Hello, we're looking at cells and batteries for our video today and the sentence there tells us that electrical cells contain chemicals that react to produce electricity. And by cells, I think the everyday language we use is battery, but technically we should say cells. And if you uh, have a look at this diagram here, this is what we mean by a cell. So we normally call that a battery, but really it should be called a cell. So an example would be a 1.5 volt cell, as you see on the screen there. So the second thing to remember is that a battery then is two or more cells joined together in series. And by in series, we mean in a circuit, in a continuous circuit, in a, in a line, if you like. So here we have a second cell. This is also 1.5 volts, but if we have these uh, connected in a series circuit, the total is going to be three volts. So we can add up the voltages to get a total of three volts. This battery here, sorry, this cell over here is what we call a non-rechargeable one, or in other words, you might call it disposable. These are quite commonly used. And this is disposable, so in other words, we can throw it away and that's going to cause waste and pollution. Once it's used up, it's thrown away and it probably goes off to landfill. The thing about the disposable batteries or the non-rechargeable ones is that the reactions that produce that electricity stop when one of the chemicals inside the battery is used up. And one example is what we call an alkaline battery or an alkaline cell. And this contains alkali, which we know is actually as a result of hydroxide ions. That should say contains and not contail. So then the other type of cell that we have is the rechargeable one, often found in mobile phones and things like that, but you can also buy them in the shop. And the chemical reactions that produce electricity are actually reversible in rechargeable batteries. So the chemical reactions are reversed when an external electric current is supplied, but electricity is supplied when connected to a circuit. So in other words, if we connect this to a circuit here, for example, with a lamp in it, that lamp will light up. And then when the battery runs out, we can then charge it by reversing those chemical reactions by connecting it to an external electrical current. And we can do that by usually plug it into the mains, which will provide a direct current, or we could just show it in a diagram like this. This diagram is incorrect because the positive of the battery is on the wrong side in the diagram. However, you get the idea. So the chemical reactions are reversed when an external electrical current is supplied, and that allows the battery to be recharged. This will, of course, produce less waste and less pollution because they can be reused and not thrown away we can take a look at a very simple cell. We can look at a very simple cell, which is quite easily made in the lab. And in fact, you can make it with a lemon and a couple of metals, believe it or not. But here we have the example. We've got what we call a container. We've got a container with what we call an electrolyte in blue there and two metals. So here we've got, let's call it, for example, metal A and the other one is metal B. And those are both in an electrolyte and an, electro, an electrolyte is a solution that contains ions, for example, sodium chloride. And this will produce a potential difference or a voltage, for example, 1.1 or 0 0.5 volts. But this can be produced by the two metals being placed in an electrolyte. Now, the size of the potential difference produced can vary, and that depends on four different things that you should know about. So these are listed here. So the first one there we've got is the type of electrode. And by type of electrode, we're going to look at this in a bit more detail in a minute, but by type of electrode, we're talking about the metals that are used there in the diagram. The second one is the electrolyte that we use. Also the concentration of electrolyte and also the temperature has effect or has an effect on the potential difference produced in a simple cell like this one. Let's take a look at the type of electrode and what kind of effect that has. For this, we need our reactivity series of metals. So here's a small portion of that. And we can determine or make a judgment on the size of that potential difference by looking at the difference in reactivities of the metals that you're using. So looking at the difference in reactivity of the metals that you're using. For example, if the two metals were magnesium and aluminium, there is a small difference in reactivity, so you're going to generate a low potential difference. However, if we use, say, aluminium and copper, well, there's a big difference in react reactivity or a bigger difference in reactivity, so you're going to generate a larger potential difference 
because of the bigger difference in the reactivity of those two metals. Okay, so that's one of the factors that determines the size of the potential difference. Now what we can do is look at some potential differences with various metals and make a judgment on the reactivity of the metals involved based on what that potential difference is. So here we've got an experiment, we've got our electrolyte, one of the metals is copper, so one of the electrolytes is copper, no, one of the electrodes, one of the electrodes is copper, the other one is, uh, could be of various metals, and we're going to test it with three different metals. So we've got copper with metal X, copper with metal Y, and then copper with metal Z. And you can see the potential differences generated with the different metals. And one key and important point to notice or note here is that the bigger the difference in the reactivities, the bigger the potential difference. So a bigger difference in PD is because of the bigger difference in reactivity of the metals. So you can start making deductions based on that information there. So if we look at the most reactive metal, it's going to be the one with the biggest potential difference of plus 0.9 volts. Then we have plus 0.4. Then in fact, we're going to have copper. And then we're going to have metal Z because that has a negative potential difference. So copper is more reactive than metal Z. Metal X is more reactive than the copper. And metal Y is the most reactive. So we can put them in order. Y, X, copper, and Z. Okay, so this is something that you might be asked to do based on some information that you're given in potential differences and the types of electrolyte or in fact the types of electrodes that you're using. But other than that, that's the end of the video for cells and batteries. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.